of all the parashiyot of the year, Vayakel Pekude has to be one of the driest. Shabbat Shalom. In this week's parasha, Parashat Vayakel Pekude, we have a complete revision of what transpired in the desert. Chapter after chapter, verse after verse, we have the, uh, the building of the Mishkan, the, the sanctuary that was placed in the desert. In all its glory, in all its details, we read about the construction. We read about the donations of, uh, of all the different building materials. We read how each of the, uh, the, the vessels were constructed. But instead of the Torah saying, Moses issued a call to build the Mishkan, and they built it according to, exactly according to specification, as was described in Parsha Truma Tetzave, in our Parsha of Vayaka Pekudeh, the Torah goes and repeats in great detail every single fair vessel that was, uh, was built, how it was built, and how it was constructed. And the question is why? I want to suggest the following idea. If you've ever been in love, and you, uh, you get engaged, you will go and tell everybody exactly what happened, where you were in the moment, what transpired, what the weather was like, what you were wearing, how the proposal happened, what you felt, what you said, everything will be described in great detail. When you buy your first home, you're so excited about it, you want to just tell everybody about what's, what's going on. This is the living room, this is this, this is that. You want to you get so excited, you can't, you, you just have to tell everybody what is going on. In Pasha Vayakub Bekude, we have the same thing. The Jewish people are building a house for God. They are so excited and so enthusiastic about the building process that they can't, they, they can't hold back. They bring so many materials, so many materials that volunteer, they donate so many materials that Moses is told by the people, stop, so the, the builders, we got too much, tell the people to stop. And then the whole parasha, if you read it carefully, is one of such excitement. The, peer, the, the, the description of how every single Jewish person was involved in the building process, how they built everything. Everything, there's so much energy, so much positivity, and so much joy. When you read through the parasha, through these parashiyot, with this adverb, through these lenses, it transforms the parasha into one of great joy. We see a people really connecting to God. Why was it that there was such enjoyment? And such joy. According to the, the, the biblical commentator Rashi, it was because the Mishkan was, it was part of the atonement for the golden calf. At the golden calf, the Jewish people used gold and silver and fashioned, uh, gold and fashioned an idol which they worshipped. They went against God. After Moses had prayed so hard and got the re redemption, God says to him, build a Mishkan. But use the, uh, the, the gold, use all the materials to fashion a, a structure where I can dwell, I can be with them. The building of this Mishkan symbolizes the restoration of the relationship between God and the Jewish people. With re through, uh, reading the Pasha with the, through these eyes, how can you not be excited? Every single verse showed the, uh, the, the dedication of the Jewish people, the enthusiasm to reconnect with, uh, with God. And at the end of the parasha, we read how the, how, the, how the cloud of glory descends upon the Mishkan and it becomes functioning. They could look and say, see a building and say, look, there is God. He's dwelling amongst us. What, what an amazing lesson. So the verses we try we are, are transformed from dry fact to, emerge, to one filled with so much emotion and so much love as the Jewish people reconnected, uh, reconnected with God. A new way to read a parsha. Shabbat Shalom.